Now, we did discuss subsection isotherms. How to determine subsection isotherm? Đây là đường đẳng nhiệt hấp phụ. This is a desiccator. You see this very often in the lab. This is made by glass and is closed tightly. No mass exchange with environment. No mass exchange. Okay. Then they put here at the bottom a saturated saw solution or a solution of some chemical means that they put a dissolved component in water. So this one would have a certain what value? Water activity value, right? Do you get it? The more salt you put in this solution, the lower the water activity of this solution. So you can make a series of solutions with different water activity value. And then the water here will evaporate. And when you have equilibrium, this water activity will be equal to the what in the air? Relative humidity in the air. Water activity of, okay, of the solution here indicate how easy the water can evaporate. And when water evaporates, of course, then how much water is in the air, then it's determined the relative humidity of the air. Because this chamber is closed. So when you have a balance, this and this is the same. Actually, when you take water activity, you multiply by 100, you will have the relative humidity of the air. And then what? They put here a sample, a food sample. If, if this sample had lower water activity compared to the water activity of this solution what happened the weight of this sample will increases or decreases do you think if the water activity of this sample is smaller than the water activity of the solution here or smaller than the relative humidity of surrounding air then vapor from the air will be absorbed into the the food more than the evaporation but if the sample is quite diluted has a lot of water then the water activity is higher so what will be the result water will evaporate more to the environment than the absorption right then it loses weight so when they do a series of solution can be salt solution, can be sulfuric acid or glycerol solution at a certain concentration to generate different this value. And they put the food inside, they have a balance, and they can construct this curve. Consumption isotherm. When you do dry experiment, when you do your thesis, for example, normally this is also an important experiment you need to build. N important graph you need to build okay what do you see now this curve is what water activity of a food and this one is moisture content of your food is moisture content and water activity the same no if it's the same then uh, why is different curves two, two different curves what do we see here there are two curves one is called absorption and the other one is desorption. To build this, you need desiccator in reverse slide. What is absorption? Absorption means you do a very dry sample. You make a very dry sample and you put in desiccator and it will absorb the vapor. And what the desorption curve means you have a very fresh sample. The sample with quite a lot of water, you put in desiccator and it's loose water and this become drier and drier time to time. Okay, like we explained in previous slide, depend on this sample, depend on the water activity of this sample, you may lose weight, lose water or you may gain water. When you gain vapor from the air, you have absorption. When you lose water to the air, you have desorption. And my question is now, there are two curves. Which curve is desorption? Which curve is absorption? The solid and the dot one. Which one is desorption? Which one is absorption? If we just draw a line, we see. 
at one moisture content, for example. This, this is the same sample, just one fresh sample with one dry sample, the same big nature, the same food. Okay. Two moisture content, but you see the two curve will give two different what? Water activity of the food. And then during dry in or during absorption, the water activity will be higher, do you think? During drying, what kind of water do you remove first? Free or bound? Free. You remove free water. And then when you let the dry food reabsorb, the water just newly absorbed will be free or bound right away? Free. Because the new water just takes in such kind of free. But when you do drying, the free water is already removed, so the remaining inside is quite bound. So which one is drying curve? This one is drying because it has lower water activity. Why lower? Because water is bound, right? And this one is as reabsorption, reabsorption. I have told, yeah. It just take the new water in, so it has high water activity because the water is free. Okay, and when you let a food dry or you let dry food reabsorb water you have different water activity even though you have the same moisture content. Which one is more stable when you store, you think? This one. The same moisture content, but it has lower water activity, so it's more stable, right? These two curves do not overlap, and this is called hysteresis in physical chemistry. They call this hysteresis là hiện tượng trễ trong hóa lý mean the two curves are not the same and this is normally for food why do we need to know this? we need to know because for many food when we dry it we have the dry food it is stable but when we let it just reabsorb a little bit vapor from the air it will increase a lot of water activity and then it will spoil fast. Microorganisms grow fast, chemical, biochemical reaction take place fast. Okay, what do we need to summarize? A small amount of newly absorbed vapor from the air can increase a significant level of water activity in some, of some food and then this will spoil the food very fast. For this food, what do we need to do right away and properly? Packaging. We have to pack well. We need to have good barrier property that the vapor from the air will not go into the food. Otherwise, the food becomes spoiled. If one food have these two curves kind of overlap, then it's not really sensitive with packaging. Normally for food is different like this. Okay, so now we go to another concept, moisture diffusion. The moving, the migration of water in food is very important when we do drying. If they can move fast, means they have high diffusion. They feel a quick time. Yeah. If they can diffuse fast, then they migrate fast, then, then you dry fast. Drying is a simultaneous heat and mass transfer process. In drying, we have heat and mass transfer. Why? Because heat from the air will transfer to the food. And mass from the food will transfer to the, to the air. The two simultaneous processes which occur. And what do we see in this slide as well? Moisture removal from a food product will occur due to diffusion of liquid water or water vapor. So the water, liquid water inside the food will migrate, diffuse to the surface and evaporate. Or they can already evaporate a bit inside before they move forward outside, depending on the way we do drying, depending on the structure of the product. 